Guys, this episode is all about van life and the newly updated 2020 Ford Transit van lineup. Why is this significant? Well, it's because Ford has updated their Transit both on the inside. They also added um, new engine options, new configuration options, and all-wheel drive. And in this video, I'm gonna use the online configurator on their site to show you the most affordable 2020 Ford Transit van. Also, the most expensive one. The price range is between 34,000 and 60, 4,000 bucks. So let's hit it off with going to the commercial vehicles page on the Ford site. And I'm going to ignore for now, for this video, the transit, chassis cab, or cutaway configurations. They're also available and they start at 30,635. But I'm going to focus on the 2020 transit van. And the reason why I went to the commercial site on their page is because it also offers a look at the cargo vans, crew vans, not just passenger vans. So I'm going to build my own and show you what's going on here. If you thought pickup trucks had a lot of configurations, well, that doesn't compare with possible ways to configure a full-size van, as you can kind of get an idea here. There is cargo van, there is crew van, that I'll talk about in a second. There is passenger van, of course, but then there is three different roof heights and also three different lengths. Not all of them appear for every configuration, uh, but this is what you have. They're launching the 2020 Transit with two engines and uh, the third engine, the diesel, is coming a little bit later. I'll tell you about this in a second. Also two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. And then they have maybe, what, a dozen different weight configurations <laughs> and rear axle ratios, but one transmission, which is a 10-speed. So let's quickly go over the engines. They're starting out with a 3.5-liter naturally aspirated V6. It's a PFDI injected engine. Uh, the power rating on it is 271 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Once again, it's made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission, as all 2020 Transit vans now are. If you want to step up to a 3.5-liter EcoBoost, you can do that. And that engine option costs $2,350. And the power rating on this EcoBoost is 306 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. So it's not an identical, obviously, rating as you would find in an F-150 pickup truck. The, the truck has a higher rating. But for the van, and probably it's a little bit detuned for commercial use and longevity and just the heavy, heavy hauling that vans usually do. And the engine that's coming a little bit later is a two-liter bi-turbo diesel. Bi-turbo means there are still two turbochargers, but they're mounted serially. And this is a very similar engine that's available overseas in a Ranger Raptor pickup truck. But for the transit van for the United States market, the power rating will be 210 horsepower at 3,750 RPM and 369 pound-feet of torque at 1,750 RPM. So a really torquey little diesel. Obviously, we haven't driven any of these engines in the new transit yet, uh, but I'm really looking forward to see how this diesel will perform. Our very own Stephen Elmer was at the work truck show and he saw the 2020 Transit vans in person and here he is to give you a closer look at the van. Now there was definitely a focus on new technology with this Transit. So first of all, you have Wi-Fi capability here now and that's actually across the entire Ford commercial lineup and you can hook up to 10 devices into the Wi-Fi here on the Transit. And then when it comes to driver assistant technologies, this van is now packed full of them. So you get automatic emergency braking, you get collision mitigation, you get post-collision braking, lane departure warning, and even automatic high beams on the headlights. Let's get back to the configurator. So the most affordable van, as I mentioned before, is the cargo van, low roof, regular length. So it's a fairly compact, if I can say that, for a full-size van. This van starts at 34,510 bucks. This is before destination. And it's equipped with a base, naturally aspirated V6 gas engine. And it comes with a 373 non-limited slip rear axle. Uh, although you can, of course, update it, 
Boom, and the final out the door price is 35,255 bucks MSRP. But then, let's see what happens when you start to build up this van. The new crew van option, which is becoming really popular across the market, starts at $36,720. And basically what this is, is a van that has two rows of seats. So you can kind of see the windows um, in the sliding door. And behind the, sec the second row of seats, there is uh, just a cargo area. So this van is really meant to haul your crew to the job site or somewhere else. So you can carry up to about five people, maybe six and a lot of cargo capacity still in the back of the van. It's not available as a high roof until you go to a longer length or maybe even an extended length. And of course, if you do choose high roof extended lengths for certain configurations, you also get dually rear wheels, which is really cool, but also allows you to carry a lot more payload. And you could see the maximum gross vehicle weight rating is 10,360 pounds. You could select that as well. But what I really wanted to show you is how a most expensive 2024 Transit van comes about. So the passenger van obviously will be the most expensive because it has additional seats, additional insulation, and additional interior uh, amenities. And of course, you gotta go for the extended high roof version to get the most expensive configuration. And this also comes as a dually. It's available in XL passenger van, which starts at 45,160 bucks and goes to the XLT that starts at just over $47,000. As you can see here, the XLT also gets sort of updated headlights. It looks a little bit more premium instead of the regular headlights and the regular bumper front bumper on the XL. And then of course you want more power. The turbo diesel is not available yet. So you choose the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. And as I said, the EcoBoost engine is a $2,350 option. But then, oh yeah, you gotta roll up your sleeves and also select four wheel drive. Uh, the four wheel drive system pricing breaks down like this. If you have a more basic cargo or a crew van configuration, the all wheel drive system costs 4,695 bucks. But in this passenger van XLT, the option for the all wheel drive is a little bit higher at 5,480 bucks. So if you break it down the middle, it's around $5,000 to add all wheel drive capability to the new transit van. And I think it's really cool. A couple of uh, interesting points about this four wheel drive system that Ford calls it. They also call it intelligent all wheel drive. A lot of the components are shared with the 2020 Ford Explorer, uh, the transfer case and some of the other components that come along with it. And it's able to dynamically adjust power from front to back. So depending on uh, slippery conditions, can adjust power. But what I like about this is available on a lot of different configs. So crew van, medium roof, long length, et cetera, et cetera, several different engine options for the naturally aspirated or the turbocharged gas V6. Then you could also select a 373 limited slip axle in the back. So that provides even more traction potentially. But what four wheel drive doesn't give you is additional ground clearance. The ground clearance is the same across the board for all transit vans. And I asked Ford about this and they told me that it's because a lot of these vans are used for work and also as shuttle buses. And they didn't, they didn't want to jack up the height of the van and not make it too difficult for the workers to actually get in and out of the van or uh, you know, the passengers to get in and out. So let's configure it further and see how far we can push this price. The green gem <laughs> is one of the colors I kind of like, but for the sake of this, let's go for the Kapoor red. Uh, it's a $200 option. Then a couple of other packages. You can get auxiliary heaters and AC prep packages. So you can then choose that. Chrome wheels for $940. Bucks. Well, you, we got to go for chrome if we're going all the way up. Heavy duty trailer tow package. Um, the towing rating, um, I don't have that right now at the moment, but it should be between about 5,000 and 7,500 pounds, depending on configuration. Upfitter switches is really nice if you're adding additional lights, if you want to really go overlanding and camping. Um, additional accessories are always great. $610 for upfitter package. The dual batteries on this one are already there. 
So that's pretty nice. I'm not gonna do a backup alarm. I really hate backup alarms. Engine block heater, okay, maybe. For colder climates, keyless entry pad, 95 bucks. Two key options, 75 bucks. Premier alarm system for safety, okay, good. Rear window defroster, great. Remote start, even better. Reverse sensing is already there. And I want a running boards, power operated running boards, yes. Wheel liners, all the wheel liners, I always want to prevent mud from caking underneath. Privacy windows, a little bit more tint, okay. Extended mirrors, I like to tow a trailer, so yes, absolutely extended mirrors. Interior, now on the interior, Ford has updated it to look more like an SUV. So they kind of moved on from where, where they were before, and that's nice because it has to compete with the latest Mercedes Sprinter vans, and on the Sprinter van, the interior looks really premium. So Ford is trying to step up their game. I'm gonna choose the leather package, which costs 1160 bucks for the passenger van. And the van also comes with a lot of safety features like driver assistance package, blind spot monitoring. So it's really loaded to the gills with safety and assistance technologies. Power outlet, absolutely. I wanna charge my stuff. Trailer brake controller, absolutely. I'm not sure why it's extra. Should have been inside the trailering package. And finally, here you could see some of the images of the interior, new screens, but of course I'm gonna go for the most expensive one here, and which is the audio pack with navigation, and you can see rear view camera is available as well. So there you have it. I loaded it up to about $62,375. If you added a couple more items, um, I've also seen a configuration that's at about 64000 So yes, if you want a luxurious shuttle van, you can do it. Um, if you want to decontent it a little bit and add less stuff, but then also send it somewhere else to be upfitted as an RV, or maybe more of an overlanding rig with drawer systems or beds or whatever, of course you can do that as well. There's a lot of configurations. Like I said, there's probably about a million different ways or more you can configure a van like this. But a van that I would pick is actually would be a crew van and it wouldn't be a dually. And it would be uh, a medium roof, long wheelbase. I think it's kind of a, a good of all worlds. I can probably not stand up all the way in a medium roof configuration van, but it's additional room is offered. Of course, I would choose an EcoBoost V6 for extra power and extra towing. Maybe I want to bring a trailer with me. All-wheel drive system, of course. And the crew van would offer capability for up to probably six people and also a lot of cargo area in the back, potentially for the bed or something else. Finally, 373 limited slip. Yes, I would like to choose that. I don't think a 410 is available with an EcoBoost. It's not. So this van is at about 45,335 bucks. And then I need to add, of course, a towing package and a couple of other items I would choose for a silver. Interesting to see that a lot of these colors are actually additional cost. Only the white, Oxford white and race red are no cost options. Auxiliary heater, I think I would need that for all the climates. Towing package, upfitter switches. So after a few options, this is a van that I would configure for myself if I was to buy a full-size van at about $48,000, um, just over that. And it's a competitive price. If you look at what Mercedes is doing with their Sprinter van, uh, you can configure it with a diesel engine currently and four-wheel drive system for them as well. But when you add those options to their base van, the pricing just increases dramatically. So this is still a very competitive price. Of course, there's still the Ram Promaster van in this space and the Nissan NV, uh, the large one. Uh, but I think Ford is offering a lot of choice and they've updated their technology and interiors and uh, configurations to offer more choice to more people. And especially here in Colorado, the all-wheel drive system will be very key in the winter. And guys, go back to tfltruck.com for more news views and real world truck and full-size van reviews.